Hey everyone, this video here is basically a build blog of a new system that I've created, which you can see all of the components here. This was kind of a test build that I created for my workplace, actually, and it's actually a pretty neat little system. It's a super small form factor mini ITX build. You can see the SFX power supply there, but it's also a super high-end gaming system. We've got a GTX 980, an i5-4690K, all packed into a Raven RVZ01 case from Silverstone. This is my Raven build. First thing I did here, obviously, start off with the case. As you guys can see here, it's a pretty sleek little unit. Now, I took off the top panel here and did a little bit of prep work before I actually started shooting, so bear with me. First thing you'll want to do is remove all those cables, unscrew all of the screws holding in the GPU drive bracket, remove the drive bracket, and then remove the included case accessories. Once that's done, you'll want to unscrew the power supply bay bezel. There's four screws, two on each side. Once that's done, it just kind of rocks out of place. Then you can slide in your SFX power supply like so, attach it with the included mounting screws with your power supply, and then just put that aside for a moment. Now we're installing the CPU into the motherboard. Pretty simple process, I'm sure you've seen it a million times, so I won't go into detail about how it's done. Next up, we're installing the memory modules. This is a 8GB kit of Kingston HyperX memory, 2x 4GB. Now we're going to flip the motherboard over, and on the bottom you'll see the M.2 SATA or PCI Express on this particular motherboard, which is a Asus Z97i Plus. It's a great board with a lot of features. This M.2 drive is a hybrid SATA or PCI Express M.2 drive, so you can use either type of uh, M.2 SSD in this particular unit. We opted to go with an ADATA 256GB SSD. Next we'll install the cooler backplate on the bottom of the motherboard. It's pretty simple, you just kind of drop it on and then pop those, those four screws through the holes. Drop these four little standoffs onto the top side, which basically just give it the right height for the cooler to attach later on. Then you attach these two cross brackets, which again, there's another cross bracket that kind of sits on top of them and pinches the cooler down onto the CPU. Next, there's four thumb screws that you tighten down just to hold everything in place. And they're just thumb, like finger tighten screws. You don't actually use any kind of a, a wrench or anything like that to tighten them up. Now that that's done, I actually did something I don't normally do on builds. I installed the power cables on the motherboard right away. You can see they're actually really short, and they're these kind of flat, ribbony cables. Now, the reason for that is because of the SFX power supply and the limited room in this case, it's actually easier to attach the power cables to the board now as opposed to later. At this point, I'm installing the pass-through antenna cable, essentially, into the I.O. shield on the back of the board. It's a pretty simple process, you just need a couple of wrenches to get everything nice and tight. Now I'm going to do some cable management here and I'm not actually going to skip over this and I want to talk about it for a minute in this particular case, the uh, Silverstone RVZ01. Now since it's such a small case, cable management is really important. I noticed that there's actually a lot of room kind of right in front of the power supply which obviously is for ventilation but it's got its own dedicated ventilation intake hole for the fan in the power supply and they can vent straight through the power supply and basically out into the case so I wasn't too worried about blocking off that ventilation area so I kind of positioned the power supply in there and stuffed all the, uh, the front panel connector cables as well as some of the USB cable right up into that area there. I also do the same thing later on with the uh, front audio connector or that's actually the front audio connector now sorry the uh, the USB cable is something I kind of stuff into the right hand side of the power supply bay area when I'm finished here. It's really important to cable manage at this stage in this build or it's going to be very difficult to work in. Now I'm taking the two bottom fans. One of them actually comes attached to the top panel that took, I took off at the beginning of the video. However, due to clearance issues with the cooler I'm using, I moved it to the bottom slot here, which basically just adds more cooling to the graphics card area on this particular case. Now I'm going to basically just kind of drop the 
motherboard into place here. Get everything lined up with the I.O. shield on the back, get all the cables run underneath it the way I want, and then we're going to start screwing it into place. Just four screws, and one in each corner essentially on a mini ITX board, nothing too special. Once that's complete, I go ahead and install those two fans at the bottom of the case, those 120 millimeter slim profile fans, into the two optional fan headers on the motherboard itself. Then I kind of start working on some cable management. Again, more cable management. Anyway, this is connecting the antenna cables to the actual wireless card that's included on this particular motherboard. They're very finicky and kind of small, so they're kind of hard to do if you have semi-large size hands. Then I go ahead and install the front panel audio connector right beside the wireless card there. Next up, we install the front panel connector. Kind of stuff all that down. I use a screwdriver here just to kind of gently stuff it down underneath right beside the 24-pin ATX cable. Then I decide to run the 8-pin ATX power auxiliary cable for the motherboard. Plug that right on in. Then again, we do the same thing with the 24-pin. This, no matter what in this case, I think whatever power supply you have with whatever cable is going to be a bit of a pain. It's hard to do, the cable is large, it's unwieldy, and it's it's just generally a pain. I, I, I did it pretty decently, I believe. This is a decent layout for the cables in this case. Uh, figure it out however you can, however works for you. And keep in mind that if you have a bigger cooler like I do later, those cables can get in the way. So, just, just keep that in mind. As you can see there, there's the front panel USB 3.0 header cable. These things are annoying to work with if you don't have a right angle connector on the motherboard. As they stick up, they're stiff, they're hard to work with. And I did the best I could there, but it honestly, if that was a right angle connector, it would have been so much better, I think. Again, I just kind of stuff all that cable back down in the right hand side there beside the power supply bracket and then I installed the LP4 Molex connector. Moving on to the GPU bracket, you can see how this works with the optical drive. You just kind of slide it in and screw it into place. Unfortunately, I didn't show the two screws, but you can see one of the holes here on the bottom left of the screen. Now we're taking the graphics card itself, attaching the riser, the PCI Express riser, and then attaching it into the right angle PCI Express extension daughter board. So there's actually two different pieces that actually let you connect this into the system. Once that's done, you're going to want to run your power cables for the optical drive if you're installing one and the power, and the, sorry, not the power supply, and the uh, power cables for the GPU. Kind of through that bracket, and then basically, once that's done, you can start screwing in this whole bracket after dropping it into the case and plugging that daughter board into the motherboard. You can see here, I go ahead and install the SATA data cable to the optical drive into the motherboard. I kind of wind up this GPU power cable, just plug it right on in and kind of stuff it right down like so. Pretty clean so far. The last thing we really have to do here is go on ahead and install the cooler. We're using a Silverstone, I believe it's the NT06 Nitrogen Pro. Basically, you can see how this cross bracket is going to attach and screw down. There's actually holes in the heat sinks that let you do this. Now, th this is a fairly difficult process. I have a power cable for the fan that I need to connect to the motherboard, or a fan cable. And then, basically, you just need to line everything up and kind of hope that that bracket that's on top of the cooler doesn't fall out of place. It, it is a pain to work with. This is hard to do. It took me many, many mounts to actually get this right. I cut the video a few times. I might have even done this beforehand a few times. And I even took it off and did it a few times after the video just to make sure I knew how this was gonna mount. Now, there's spring tension cables, or screws, sorry, not cables, and essentially that means that you just tighten them as tight as you can. Now, I was being gentle and kind of going slow here, hence I went back and forth so many times, but once it's in there, it's super sturdy. This particular cooler has a 120 millimeter slimline profile fan in between the, basically, CPU area and the heatsink, so it's actually under the heatsink fins right now. And it's basically pulling cool air in from that big open side panel there that you can see and then exhausting it into the case. And then the two bottom fans out of the GPU area are doing the same thing. Anyway, thanks for watching this Raven build. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any requests, questions, or suggestions for the future. Thanks for watching. Bye.